Guys, I've got another MP5 variant video for you today. Uh, I've done one on the Zenith MKE, similar to this. This is also an MKE product, which we'll get into. Uh, and I also did one on the SP5 from H&K. We'll bring that in and out of this video as we go. But this one is uh, Century Arms, like it says, but it's not made by Century Arms. It's imported by them made by MKE, same guys that used to do it for Zenith. Uh, now that's a good thing, because a lot of us might hear the name Century Arms and think, geez, uh, I'm not sure how I feel about that. They've had some bad luck with their AK QC, and that, uh, that causes a lot of people to shy away from this name. But I felt confident because I had good experience with my MKE, I imagine that this would probably be the same thing, and so far I can say it has. But we'll get into the reliability at the end. Let me just show you the box it comes in. Nice hard case. You get two 30 round MKE magazines, high quality magazines. You get a single point sling, which I haven't used because I prefer my Vickers sling. And then this is the cap that comes on the end of it. it has a point to attach your sling there. I have something else on the gun now that I'll show you in a minute. Then you get this nice little military style cleaning kit with oil, a brush, um, you know, barrel cleaning, um, doohickeys. Nice that they include that. You also have this flash hider that comes with it that I'll probably never use. Still gonna keep it though. Don't ask me to have it because I wanna have everything that this gun came with if I ever decide to sell it, which isn't likely, but still. Leave me alone. Uh, the uh, top rail accessory that it comes with allows you to throw a Picatinny rail section along the top for running red dots, which is nice. The SB5 didn't come with that. Just saying. It's a nice little addition. And then, of course, your paperwork and the gun. Enough of that. Here is the gun. Now this is not how it came out of the box. I bought it from Atlantic Firearms. It came with what I just showed you in the box. It had that uh, end point here. And then I had the SP Tactical Brace added to my cart uh, as a package deal, which was nice. Got a little bit cheaper. Let's just go ahead and start at the back. We'll talk about the rest of the upgrades I've done as we go. Like I said, SP Tactical side folding brace. Pretty versatile, makes it a lot more comfortable if you decide to shoulder it, but you can also brace it and it has a folding function, which is great. It makes it a really nice small package, especially if you take that suppressor off of there, which is a little carbon locked. There it is, boom. Backpack ready, under the coat ready for you operators, not like me, but still it's nice to have the folding option. Also has a QD point right there on the left-hand side. No QD point on the other side, but that's okay. We're running it this side, it was just fine for me. And that's all I have to say about the brace. Moving on from there, you have your takedown pins. Two takedown pin system here. Your full-size MP5s will have a one pin rear takedown system here. Boom, one pin on there. Just a difference I thought I'd mention, if you didn't know. Now let's jump into the lower here, polymer lower. Um, you have a more of a classic grip, I would, I would call it. I'm not sure if you, we can consider this classic, but I noticed that a lot of MP5 variants and clones these days are coming with 
this style of grip where there's no grooves. It's very much just a plain old grip, very Magpul style, which is good. It works. I think they call it Navy, a Navy module. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. I'm not 100% sure, but I do prefer this. The finger grooves work well for me, and I've got an extra large Vertex glove hand. I know that's specific, but that's uh, a point of reference if you got one. And the finger grooves don't get in my way. They feel comfortable. My thumb rests nicely on that rest right there. Very nice. I enjoy that. Then you have your trigger guard, nice and large for gloved shooting. And I will show you that this is empty before we start messing with that. Nothing in there. But we leave the magazine in it because it looks cool. Yeah. So, trigger, as I said. Plenty of room in there for gloved shooting. We'll talk about the trigger at the end of all this. Moving to the safety, this is the next thing I upgraded. It came with a classic MP5 style safety. So what I mean by that, if you don't know, the safeties on MP5s are usually just on one side, this left side over here, and they're harder to get to. They're not as extended as this Magpul upgrade is. Pulling the trigger. Yeah. <laughs> So, if you're on safe and you want to switch to fire, you find yourself having to break your firing grip to activate the classic safety. Not ideal. I would rather have my hand in its firing position, on fire control I guess you could say. Uh, that way if you need to shoot, you can shoot. You don't have to be at this funky grip. So this Magpul upgrade makes it easier so that you can just flip on and off without any issues. Really affordable upgrade and worthwhile if you ask me. You get texture along the top and it is ambidextrous. If you want to change that, you could just make it left-sided or uh, right-hand-sided, which is nice. Good job, Magpul. Uh, moving forward from there, you have the other takedown pin. And on the other side, I don't think there's much else. Well, you do have your markings there. It's made in Turkey and imported by Century Arms, Inc., Georgia, VT. I think VT is Vermont. All right, uh, and then let's talk about the magazine release options. So you have two, if you didn't know, on an MP5 style gun. You have the paddle, which most of us would probably use nice and fast, in and out super easy. Or if you have crazy long fingers and you can get to it, you can with your index right here. Not ideal though. And most people probably don't do it this way, but it's there if you need it. I imagine it, it'd probably be easier to come up with a support hand and hit that button if you wanted to use that, but I don't. Uh, let's look at the, the magwell here. The magwell is not flared like you would find on a lot of modern options these days. Instead, it fits the magazines pretty much exactly, and if you don't hit it just right, you're not going to reload your gun. A lot of the times you'll find yourself, I still do it from time to time, I'll hit right here like this, which, uh, you know, just takes training to overcome, to feed that magazine in correctly every time. Just train, you'll get good at it, and you won't have to worry about no flared magwell. So, there's that. Now we can jump to the upper, if you will. So let me just bring it in close here for a second so you can take a look at the world work. Of course, there's some imperfections here and there, but that's gonna happen. It's not the end of the world. It does not affect function. However, I have to point out, on the H and K SP5, the world work is just cleaner, as you might expect from something that comes directly from HK. I mean, the money you're spending on these guys, it uh, it better be better, which it is. But this is still pretty good. The finish is nice and it works. Moving up from there, we have the uh, accessory mounting area. If I could find it, here it is the Picatinny rail that it came with. 
So, boom, you'll tighten it down, and now you have a pick rail there with which you can add red dot optics. Can't recall if I said it yet, but I am considering making this a home defense weapon. If I did that, I'd probably want that rail on there so I could throw a red dot, an MRO, or something of the like. But the slick look is just nice, very classic, very much like Neo's MP5 in the Matrix. Boost change. Holy shit! <gasps> All right, so let's have a look at the sights, the iron sights. Now, I've always found the iron sights on MP5s very, very accurate. This is still the case, even though it comes with the castle sights. Now you can probably guess why they call them castle sights. It very much looks like a medieval turret with the viewing ports and the walls. So that's obviously why they call it that. And what you would do is you would line up that front post there with your viewing port. And that's how you, uh, use your irons on the HK. Twisting this here just gives you a bigger aperture or smaller, depending what you like or what you need. But my preferred type of iron sight, rear iron sight for the H&K style handguns, or pistols rather, and rifles, SBRs, pistol caliber carbines, whatever you want to call it, is the diopter sight. The diopter sight, instead of those open topped castle sights, are enclosed circles with varying sizes just like on the other one and to me it's just more accurate I find it a little bit faster to pick up the sight picture so I prefer that I actually had to buy this diopter sight from hkparts.net because this SB5 came with castle sights unfortunately I won't replace them here though because even though I'm not going for clone correctness, the castle sights here are clone correct, if it matters to you. Plus, if I'm throwing a red dot on there later, it wouldn't matter much anyway. You will lose your irons here if you go with this. Obviously, it covers up your irons. Let me double check that, make sure I'm not lying to you. Actually, with the rail alone, it does not cover up your irons, but once you throw a red dot on there, it may do that. So, word of the wise. Moving forward from there, you have your charging handle. Charging handle works just like any other MP5 style charging handle. Pull it back and up, locks into position. These guns do not have a last round bolt hold open if you didn't know that. That means you're gonna get a click no bang when you run out of ammo. You gotta come up here, lock it in place. Then you can drop your mag, insert a fresh one. And to release it, you let it go. It rides forward on its own. Or you can give the old staple, the HK slap. No one has ever done anything like this. That's why it's going to work. And uh, one other thing when it comes to just the attention to detail with H and K is take a close look at this one. You just have your texture all the way around. But then on the SP5, they give you a nice little border. Just look at that. Just looks a little cleaner to me, doesn't it? A little extra texture here. Just saying, H and K goes over the top. All right. So that's the charging handle. Moving forward from there, you have your hand guard. Now this is the third thing I upgraded. The hand guard it came with was just the standard heat shield with the hand stop. But uh, I needed something capable of mounting up a flashlight. Because like I said, it may go into a home defense role. And if I do that, I'm going to need some way to throw this on here. There's really no way to do it on a MP5 without any upgrades. So this is the best method right here. And also keep in mind, if you do this, you probably are going to want to run that flashlight on the right-hand side. So I'll get a Surefire or a Cloud Defense Light, Cloud Defensive, whatever. I'll have to put it on the right hand side because if I put it here, it would definitely get in the way of using this charging handle. I'd have to work around it. It would just be all kinds of not uh, efficient. So definitely gonna run it here, then probably 
tie the slack up underneath here somewhere and then run the activation switch on the left side. Okay. As far as uh, heat, I haven't gotten it really hot since I put this Magpul handguard on here. But the one it came with, the heat shield, worked pretty well at soaking up that heat. It did not get too hot on me. But careful back here because it did get hot there where you have your metal surfaces, which it makes sense. And moving forward to the barrel, you have a 5.75 inch barrel, cold hammer forged, which is nice. You have your classic tri-lug system on there, which is my favorite way to mount a suppressor as I bump into the stand. But you also got your one half by 28 threads with a thread protector if you want to use that. So that pretty much covers features. Before I forget, let's go into the trigger and the weight. And verify one more time that it is unloaded. Yep. Yep. Throw this in here for stability. And bring out the old gauge. I'll compare it with the SP5 while I got it out here, just out of curiosity. First pull, 6 pounds, 15.7 ounces. Sounds about right. Six pounds, 5.9 ounces. Five pounds, 10.8 ounces. That seems a little light. I'll do one more. I was getting a bunch of sevens earlier. Five pounds, 14 ounces. Okay, well, most of the time when I pull it, it I get a, around seven pounds, which seems right to me. So you're probably looking at a average of six-ish pounds trigger. Let's give you a close-up look at it though. Very much a two-stage trigger. You'll have your first stage here, a little bit of take up, then it breaks nice, loud. The reset, also loud and tactile, and then you're right back where you started. One more time. First stage, a little bit of creep, but not much, and it breaks. Reset, right there, loud, tactile, nice trigger. Now for comparison, let's bring out the SP5. Verified that it is unloaded. Yep, nothing in there. Nothing in there. Oh man, just noticed that the action on this is significantly smoother than that MKE. Again, go figure, H and K would really smooth that out, so I'm not surprised by that at all. Just very noticeable. Anyway, let's go ahead and show you the weight here on the SP5. 7 pounds, 8.4 ounces. 6 pounds, 13.9 ounces. 7 pounds, 1.3 ounces. So it's pretty much hovering around the same 6-ish pounds. Um, seems about right to me. I don't feel a lot of a difference between these two triggers, to be honest with you. Um, let's give you a close-up. Still same two-stage trigger, but a little bit less take-up before you hit that creep. Then it breaks nice and loudly. Reset. Loud and tactile. Right back where you started. One more time. There you go. So a very comparable trigger. I'm not going to say one is that much better than the other because I'd be lying. All right, so let's talk reliability. Um, I've been impressed. Uh, unlike my Zenith MKE, uh, this guy seems to like hollow points. Out of 700 rounds fired so far, 200 of them were hollow points. Uh, about uh, 100 of those hollow points were spear gold dot, 124 grain, which it really, really liked. Uh, Really seem to function reliably with those spear gold dots. Going to consider running those if this goes into a home defense role. 
but I'll probably want to shoot more just to verify that this is going to continue to work with them. I only had one malfunction that entire time with hollow points and with any um, ammunition for that matter. And that was with a Federal HST hollow point, 124 grain. One malfunction, failure to feed. I don't know if I mentioned it, but uh, MP5s, they aren't really built for hollow points. They don't have traditional feed ramps like a lot of pistol caliber carbines these days, AR9s. So it has a harder time with them uh, in some cases, from what I understand. Uh, so I'm not super surprised when I have malfunction with it. And this is the one I got. Kind of crushed it, really. Didn't feed. It was a failure to feed. Then that bolt kind of slammed on it and squished that bullet, set it back into the casing, which you don't want to try and shoot that now. That's not good. And it kind of just deformed the tip of the bullet there. So, yeah. That's what I was getting almost every other round with the other MKE, the full size from Zenith. That has not been the case here so far. 200 rounds in, just one malfunction. Very happy to report that. Unfortunately, it's very expensive to shoot hollow points, so I won't be doing that too often, but I will uh, try and shoot a couple hundred more before I decide to run them in here officially. With uh, ball ammo though, got about 500 rounds of that stuff through, and uh, it was mostly 115 grain, but also some 124 grain ball, zero malfunctions, ran great, suppressed and unsuppressed. And that's with all the ammo I shot through it. About 80% was suppressed, 20% unsuppressed. But this just seemed to really help with the reliability and it's just more fun to shoot suppressed, so that's how I end up doing it. So uh, that's, that's good, it's a good thing. MKE is still putting out a good product, maybe a better product now. Uh, they may have figured out whatever hollow point issues were plugging them, or maybe I had a lemon book before, I really don't know. But so far, so good here. Show you real quick one other, uh, one target that I have. I lost all my other targets on the range, but I found this one, five shot group at 50 yards, benched uh, with the Omega 9K. 115 grain ball yeah that's uh, uh for me that's i'm happy with that this is something else don't worry about that um uh, but uh yeah i was happy with that at 50 yards i mean i'm sure with a better some trigger trigger work and a red dot and a better shooter you could tighten that up but for me i was happy with that and then shooting at 25 yards i mean it was almost just basically one whole groups it was you know all you can ask for these guns are just very accurate, inherently very accurate. So happy to report that. Post edit Blue Gunner here. I almost forgot to talk about recoil, and I thought this was a pretty good video, just to example or showcase the low recoil on MP5 and even MP5K variants. Uh, it's very, very low recoiling thanks to that roller delay system. It just comes straight back into the shoulder low muzzle rise really easy to get right back up on target for follow-up shots so you can't go wrong with one of these and that's pretty much it guys i think we've covered everything if you have any comments questions or concerns let me know down in the comments i've got nothing else uh, thank you for watching see you next time